Please subscribe Sporta TV for more information, MotoGP and Formula 1 2024. Marc Marquez has rejected any feeling of guilt about Pramac exiting Ducati. The selection of Marquez by Ducati for the 2025 factory seat caused major ripples throughout the sport. The obvious occurrence was losing Jorge Martin, who signed for Aprilia, and Ania Bastianini, who will go to Tech 3 KTM. But Marco Bezzecchi has also been lost to Aprilia. Significantly, the Promax satellite team also chose to end their long association with Ducati to join Yamaha next season. I don't feel guilty about Promac leaving Ducati, because I didn't do anything, Marquez was quoted by Autosport. It is true that as a Ducati rider I would have liked them to continue, because it would be two more bikes on track, more information, and it is an important team within Ducati. As a MotoGP fan I think it is good news. On the one hand, selfishly speaking, I prefer two more Ducati on track, but as a fan it was the normal step, that one of the Ducati teams would go with Yamaha, for the championship to have four Japanese bikes, two Italian bikes less on track. Ducati will have their factory duo plus Grazzini and VR46 teams next season, while Yamaha will double their presence from two to four bikes. Pramac appeared to be a sensible destination for Marquez in 2025 due to their ability to hand him a factory spec bike until he made the bombshell declaration that they weren't an option. That appeared to force Ducati's hand to ditch any idea of placing Martin in their factory team and Marquez within Pramac. Pramac boss Paolo Campanotti has been critical of Ducati's decision to sign Marquez, claiming it goes against their philosophy of backing young riders. Ducati have been forced to defend themselves, pointing to the arrival next year of Moto2 starlet Furman Eldegar as evidence of their commitment to young talent. Marquez, meanwhile, will arrival at Ducati's official team next year amid the changing circumstance of the manufacturer possessing less bikes on the grid. Ducati have been the manufacturer to beat throughout 2024, with only Maverick Vinales securing a MotoGP win, Coda, on another bike. Peko Bagnaia, Jorge Martin and Marc Marquez have been the standouts, while Enea Bastianini has also been very strong at times. We are really proud about the results of our teams and riders, said Davide Tardazzi when summing up the first half of their season to MotoGP.com. Martin and Peko are really performing, but we have the second and third Ducati like Marc Marquez and Bastianini. As a company we are, again, so proud about the work of our engineers and teams. While Ducati have been close to unbeatable, their riders haven't been without mistakes, as both Banyaya and Martin have crashed out of winning positions. Tardazzi spoke about this and said the lessons learned will only make them stronger. I don't want to call misfortune and make mistakes. Mainly Barcelona and Peco knows very well. Anyway, he is a champion and put this behind his shoulder and then the following day he was not crying but winning. Having said that, I think Peco is the hardest with himself after mistakes. He took some excuses to the engineers and for the future we learn a lot from those mistakes and he is still growing. He is twice a world champion but is still working on himself to grow up on those things that are a matter of concentration. In Barcelona he was already too sure about winning. Sometimes you must be focused until the checkered flag. Peco will have a new teammate next season in the form of Marc Marquez. The eight-time world champion's performances since joining Ducati have been brilliant, but it's also the attitude he's shown away from the track that impressed Ducati before they chose to sign him. I think Mark steps into the Ducati field with the right attitude. He never asked us to have something more and unless Gigi Daligna gave to him. He showed us a perfect attitude and that's why he will be the rider in the factory team in 2025. When Alix Espargaro joined Aprilia in 2017, they were bottom of the MotoGP constructor standings. Honda was the dominant MotoGP force at the time, winning the triple crown of riders, teams and constructors titles. But the MotoGP world has flipped almost upside down since, with Aprilia now second in the constructor standings and Honda lodged in last since 2022. It is Espargaro's experience of helping Aprilia progress from its 2017 predicament to a debut RSGP podium in 2021 and race victories in 2022, 2023, and 2024 that Honda hopes to tap into when the soon-to-retire Spaniard joins HRC as a test rider. 
I think that it will be interesting because he was there during all the process of Aprilia growing up and arriving to win, said Repsol Honda's Luca Marini. He was the protagonist, so he understands very well the situation. It depends a lot, but for sure it's a good move from HRC. They did well. The Italian, who has brought three years of Ducati experience to Honda with him next season, admits Aspargaro has a super particular riding style. But he doesn't view that as a negative when it comes to building a well-rounded bike. For sure it's interesting to have Aliex for his knowledge of Aprilia, but also if the bike can be good for everybody, it will be a fast bike for sure, he said. Like Ducati now, every rider on the Ducati can win a race or fight for the podium. So the target is this, try to make a perfect bike that everybody can fight for the top with. While the leading Honda rider, Marini's teammate Joan Mir, is only 18th in the World Championship, the Italian believes change is in the air. I think that Honda started to change since the beginning of this season. Things are growing and getting better even if the results are the same, he said. You can feel the air inside of the garage. Everybody's pushing so hard to try to come back and be in a different situation. Even by the end of this season, we want to be more, near, the top. Luca Marini went on to take his first Repsol Honda point at the recent German MotoGP after a tire pressure penalty demoted Augusto Fernandez from 14th. Espargaro, who also expects to take part in at least one wildcard for Honda next season, will share testing duties with Stefan Brattle. On the other hand, Cal Crutchlow has been forced to withdraw from his wildcard at the British MotoGP at Silverstone. Remy Gardner will instead race for Yamaha in Crutchlow's place on August 2nd to 4th. Unfortunately, I am unable to attend my wildcard appearance at the Monster Energy British GP at Silverstone this year, Crutchlow announced. I had surgery on my hand two months ago, and the recovery has not gone as expected at all, leading to a further surgery and complications. It is important to let my hand heal fully before trying to ride the MotoGP bike. I look forward to coming back and riding with my Yamaha factory racing MotoGP test team as soon as I can and continue our project to improve the current and next year's package for the Monster Energy Yamaha MotoGP team. This year we have seen some improvement already thanks to endless work from everyone at Yamaha and the team. I hope to watch an exciting British GP this year and that everyone has a great weekend. Finally, I would like to wish Remy good luck and to have fun. He has experience on the MotoGP bike and got a good taste of the Yamaha in Germany at the last race, so it is the perfect situation for him to ride the bike again. Instead, there will be another opportunity for Yamaha's WSBK rider Gardner who raced at the last MotoGP round in Germany too. Gardner added, First of all, I just want to say that I hope that Cal can get better soon. I saw him last week, and I hope he can get back to riding and help the MotoGP project along. Obviously, it's a nice opportunity to get to ride the M1 again, so I'm really happy. Silverstone is a track I like, and hopefully I can give some more important feedback to Yamaha and the team and continue to enjoy the moment. Thanks to everyone at Yamaha, and I'm looking forward to riding again.